So we'll introduce ourselves here. Um, I am April Trafton. I am a Learning Lab Manager from Northwest, and I'm also a member of the Learning Commons Advisory Panel. Um, so I've been on the group with the group for about two years. So if you have any questions at all about the service model um, or really anything related to Learning Commons, let me know. And if I don't know the answer, I can find out for you. And um, so I'm excited to share what I know and help answer any questions that arise. And my name is Terry Rogers. I'm a librarian at Northwest Campus, and I am not on the Learning Commons advisory panel. So yes, please refer your questions to April. I just muted myself for no reason. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is a little icebreaker that will give you a chance to um, sort of non-scientifically match up with one of the areas of the Learning common Service Model. So um, Terry has posted the link to this quiz in the chat. So take a minute, click on that link, and um, as you finish the quiz, go ahead and post your, your um, results in the chat. Uh, if you feel brave and you want to just say your results on the mic, feel free. Everybody's welcome on the mic. Um, so go ahead and, and follow that link. If you have any trouble accessing the link, let us know. And um, as we see results start pouring in on the chat, we will um, you know, be able to keep track of who's finished the quiz. We need background music for this part, but I'm excited to see what the results are. like lots of support in this little breakout access.
Okay, how are we doing? Are we still doing the, working on it? Or I see lots and lots of likes. Does that mean you're also that, or you just like that they are that? All right. Um, Terry, what do you think? Should we go on and people can just finish up as we're going through? Absolutely. Okay, awesome. So if you're still working on the quiz, that's fine. Um, we're just going to do kind of a little overview of what we're going to do, um, what the activities that we're going to do. So go ahead and finish up and, you know, you can continue to post your, your results in the chat. All right. So maybe it'll go to the next slide for me. Awesome. So one of the things that um, com has come up as we've been doing this work on the learning commons is that sometimes your job title doesn't necessarily represent the work that you do. Um, we have, you know, standard job titles that lots of people across the district hold, but the work that each person does that fills that or that has that job title may be very, very different. So think about your job title and the work that you do and and think about whether you think it's a good match like your job title if somebody reads that or they hear that that's your job title they would have a really good sense of what you do and if it doesn't what job title would give that um that good informative um title to your this isn't making sense what job title would you give yourself that would inform others about what you do so just keep that in mind uh, we'll post those in just a few minutes but if your job title is a good match, great. And if it's not, um, go ahead and think about what um, job title would. I think my, hold on one moment. Oh no, okay, I'm good. All right. Okay. Terry, do you wanna give a little walkthrough of the gallery walk? Sure, so we're going to do an exercise where we think about the results that we just got from our little 100% scientific personality quiz um, and and our roles within the learning commons to see how our roles fit in, what other people are doing in the learning commons and how we support each other. And with a, with a normal gallery walk, you would go in a physical location from station to station and think about a question and post your response there. We're going to do it virtually, so we have a Google Doc um, that we will share out where you can add your responses and, um, and we will discuss. Okay. Terry, are you able to post that in the chat? Yes, I just posted the Google Doc link. All right, so you should have the Google Doc um, open. Is anybody having trouble getting to the Google Doc? Okay, awesome. So um, in this area, go ahead and put in the job title that you would give yourself and um, we will see what we come up with. I'm, I'm interested especially since some of our job titles are a lie. <laughs> I love that. Okay, Edward, I see your comment. I don't know that I'm able to grant you access because I am not the creator of this document, um, but if you want, want to post your responses in the chat, or you can just, anybody can hop on the mic and I can record your response for you in the Google Doc. Sounds good, thanks.
OK, so we're getting a lot of responses from our library specialists, um, and it looks like quite a few of them think that the job title describes what they do pretty well. Um, I love this one. Even if people have misconceptions about what's available in the library, my purpose is to show them. Um, and I think that's fantastic. Um, we do have one uh, coordinator of academic support services, but it looks like most of what you do is instructional design and faculty support. So that's interesting. So do you think that that job title coordinator of academic support services fits or would you call it something else? Yes, I love this comment that we often uh, share more than just library information, but not sure how to incorporate that into the title. And I think that's really important because a lot of people, a lot of students will come to the library or a learning center uh, to get help, not knowing specifically where they need to be. They just know this person is at a desk and this person looks friendly, so this person can help me. Um, and so, yeah, I think a lot of times our frontline people take on more roles in helping students than their job title may suggest. So Edward here in the chat says that his current job title is Assistant Director of Student Development Services and that that can be a bit vague. Um, as you do a lot of things um, in the co-curricular realm as well. So yeah, I think that's absolutely important because for me as a librarian, when I see a department called Student Development Services, that may not be clear. And if I want to refer a student to Student Development Services, they may be like, well, what all happens there? I'm just going to develop as a student. Um, so yeah, maybe a, maybe something a little bit more descriptive or a little bit more inclusive um, that that our students would recognize as, as well as staff who don't work in the area. I think that's a really key point and I see that a couple times on here is that within the department it's clear but to people who aren't in that area or you know to a student who just really is not engrossed in this work it may not be clear so um, we have kind of an internal and a, an external view which is great. OK, I see folks are still typing in and that's fantastic and we can come back and refer to this later. Um, but we're going to go ahead and move to our first virtual gallery walk station. So if we just scroll down a little bit further in this Google document, we've got station one and uh, we have our thinking question. In which portion of the Learning Commons service model do you see yourself or your role most directly related or connected? So this could be the same area um, that came up in your icebreaker personality quiz, um, or maybe your icebreaker got it wrong and you see yourself in a different area. Um, so go ahead and pop in your response in any of the following boxes. We've got access, learning support, discovery, creativity, partnerships, and enablers. Um, so wherever you feel your role fits in best, um, referring back to the overview that we heard this morning, for a little bit more about those roles. Um, and I'll just share a little bit about each of them. Um, in our last group, we had people with questions about what actually is um, each of these. So access is really um, making things available to students, whether it's physical, whether it's information, um, you know, technology, like do they have the, the computer that they need? Can they get um, on the internet? Things like that. Um, so that's sort of a, an informational um, part. And then learning support is really things that we know as tutoring, um, like 
workshops? Um, is there anything that helps with students with academic work outside of the classroom? And so those are sometimes formal, sometimes informal. Um, they can take a lot of different forms. Um, discovery and creativity is probably the one that puzzles people the most. And that's because currently at TCC, we have um, only pieces of this and it's sort of fractured. And so this is things like, how do we get the community actively involved in TCC, uh, specifically in the learning commons and use the resources that are available? How do we get faculty to partner with support staff how can support staff uh, support faculty in their courses, outside of their courses? How can the library support faculty with research? How can the, um, you know, things like that. And then also maker spaces. And that's more than just, um, some, some people think of them as sort of arts and craftsy, but that, that's only one aspect of it. So it could be anything that is making something new specifically to solve a problem. And so uh, we've talked a lot about how do we get the right people together that are working on a similar problem or that maybe aren't working on a similar problem, but could be, and they can each contribute to that solution. So it could be digital, could be 3D printing, could be physical, like um, metalworking, it could be, um, you know, podcasting, all kinds of different uh, formats, but it's really creating new things and finding out what is possible. Um, and then the last one is enablers which is really the undercurrent of all of this. So technology is driving most of this. Um, we wanna make sure that students have access to services on campus, but also off campus, so that there really is, um, you know, as long as they have internet, which can be a barrier, but um, they can access services from anywhere. Um, how is the, the, the learning commons organized? Are people trained appropriately? Is there appropriate cross-training? Um, and then also just, the, pol the policies and procedures that make sure that all of the learning commons are um, aligned across the district. So it's not necessarily going to be Northeast learning commons is different than Northwest. You know, they may have some different programs, but overall there is a, an undercurrent of alignment. So if you have any questions about those as we go on, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I'm happy to, to explain anything in more detail. So I'm just going to start going through some of the responses that we're seeing. Um, I really like this comment. I feel like information concierge describes my job, my daily job well. Um, and I think for somebody in the access area or who sees their job mostly in access, that that might be, um, yeah, an appropriate, uh, appropriate job title because our students are coming to these people to get information, technology, resources at the point of need. And the folks in this position need to know where students can go to get all of that, even if they don't offer it in their department themselves. So yes, this is this access is a role where you will be not only providing direct access, but referring students to where they can get access. And faculty and staff as well, because we don't just serve our students here. Yes, so as frontline staff, we talk to patrons, discover their needs and follow up to make sure those needs have been met. And I think that's an important aspect of the learning commons, as, uh, particularly this access role, um, is to not abandon a student, um, to make sure that if we have to refer them to somebody else that we check and make sure that, yes, we have gotten you to the right person and you are going to be in good hands from here on in. Your needs have been met. Learning support. The development of workshops and giving of them has been previous projects that I've headed, and that's fantastic. Um, a lot of times uh, we give workshops to our own peers, um, or sometimes we are training our staff, and so that might fall into um, learning support or workshop creation, and, and that's a way that our role can fit in that doesn't necessarily directly uh, involve students, but we're still supporting people within the learning commons. 
Um, I think it's interesting that so many people got support as the quiz results, and then there's only one line of support in this. That's so fascinating. I know I love it, but I am seeing some people like commenting here in the discovering creativity and partnerships in aspects of their role that that do develop those. So the art wall um, within the library, I always love that. I think each campus has that um, where we showcase um, art from faculty and students, but also within the community. Yes, absolutely. Giving webinars to faculty to get their courses online. Um, uh, I would say the majority of our faculty didn't have a Blackboard um, shell for their courses or, or didn't have a ton of Blackboard experience and weren't an and anticipating having to switch to an online environment. So having that support there, that is absolutely within the Learning Commons model, um, but it's not necessarily directly related to, say, a library or a learning lab. Yes, and partnering with faculty by giving library instruction. Um, and I think that's one of those important uh, faculty partnerships within a learning commons, because while faculty are the subject experts for their field, um, people who work in a writing center or in the library would be a subject expert within that field and could lend our expertise into uh, the classroom. And providing reserve materials, absolutely. I'm going to scroll down to enablers and yeah, absolutely. A library manager, I think, would fall under an enabler role, um, not only because you're in charge of creating policies and procedures, um, but also that, yes, you're supervising staff, you're responsible for your staff's professional development um, and making sure that everybody is providing a, a service level um, equal to to what everybody else within your department is providing. Did anyone have any questions or anything that popped up here that um, was surprising or that you'd like to know more about? Feel free to hop in the chat or on the mic. OK, I'm going to take a silence as no. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to our second uh, gallery walk station. And this is sort of building upon what we just thought about. So the question here is, which portion of the service model does your work support? So this may be a part of your job that you don't do regularly, um, but that uh, comes up from time to time. Uh, so for example, I'm a librarian, but I know how to check materials out. So I might support access by being able to go and, and help a student at a different desk if they needed it. Um, but this is also um, thinking about maybe how an administrative assistant might be a support role for the enablers or um, for access by uh, purchasing materials that the people in that department might need. So think about how your role supports another role within the learning commons. And if that wasn't clear, just hop on chat or the mic and let me know. <laughs> And a couple of these things we covered in the, the previous topic um, where we had some folks commenting about maybe placing reserves um, for faculty so that students have access to course materials. Um, that would absolutely be a way that, um, say, access uh, supports this learning support environment and also the, the faculty partnerships there. So I'll give everyone some time to type in.
So I'm going to start going through some of these responses. Um, here in the access field, I see access often coordinates uh, for other learning support services in making sure those items are available to students more hours of the day. Um, and I think that's fantastic because libraries staff wise um, seem to have the ability to staff longer hours than a lot of our other learning support offices or, or labs. And so by partnering with those uh, learning support services to provide resources and materials that are housed in the library, then those labs are still supporting the students by providing those materials and it's just the library facilitating that that lending process or that access process. Yes, the writing center providing writing guides that aren't available through the library or in the bookstore. Um, and that's fantastic because we have um, some very basic citation guides available through the library, but we are not experts in composition. And so having a writing center be able to provide those kinds of resources um, supports not only the students, but it also helps for those in access to know I can refer a student to the writing center and they'll be able to get that information there. And yes, patrons often come to the library when they're unsure of where to go or who to ask. Um, and that refers back, I think, to that information concierge role um, where uh, frontline staff, um, I think we see it a lot in the library. And I, I refer there just because I, I work in that area, but I think all of our learning labs experience that where a student will walk in and see, oh, this person is behind a desk. Um, this person can help me. And I think as we learn, move more towards a learning commons model, we're all going to be a little bit more cross trained in in learning where to refer students. Learning support that one looks like it's not quite complete. Um, but here in the discovery, creativity and partnerships, so um, I work in a learning lab and often support writing center staff as they partner with faculty. Um, and help mediate those conversations. So yeah, so maybe somebody who's typically in an enabler role would also support this discovery and creativity and partnership by acting as a liaison um, between departments um, or between uh, faculty and a lab uh, and making sure that uh, we're doing as much as we can without over communicating. And I think that's an important role as well um, because faculty can feel sometimes, I think, overwhelmed uh, with the amount of information that we want to give them. And so just making sure, or over committing, oh, I read it wrong, I'm sorry, April. <laughs> uh, but yeah, managing uh, staff time and uh, resources within a lab and, and staff availability is absolutely one of those resources. I totally agree with over communicating though as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry. Freudian slip, man, that, that's my problem. <laughs> so. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then we've got another part of the library's work is to help faculty and staff with their own educational and research needs. Um, and yeah, I think that's absolutely uh, an important role to mention there, um, because when faculty think of, of the library or the learning labs, they think of how those support services can support students, and they don't always make that connection that those uh, support services are there for faculty and staff as well. So yes, absolutely. That is a great way to, to build a partnership. Um, and then showing students how to use library technology as um, printers and copiers. It's amazing how, um, how many students come through and they've never had to use uh, a copy machine or our online printing system is, is super strange and uh, definitely requires at least a walkthrough the first time. Um, so helping students learn how to make technology work for them is also important. We have a lot of specialized software that I think students have to access. Did anyone see anything within this area that sparked an interest or a question or anything that they'd like to, to go over or talk about a little bit further? You're welcome to hop into the chat or on the mic. Okay, I think the next section is where we'll see the most questions. We're going to scroll down to Gallery Walk Station 3. 
And this is uh, our thinking question here is which portion of the service model do you want to learn more about, especially in regard to its connection with your work area at TCC? So maybe you see yourself as an enabler and you want to know how access supports you. And so somebody in that access role could talk about what they can do to support somebody in your role. Um, or if you typically work in um, access and you don't know what the enablers do. Um, for example, I'm not entirely clear on what uh, the assistant director of student development services would do on a day to day basis. Um, so perhaps you could just talk about your own role and then other people can chime in with how uh, how they can support that role. So you're welcome to add your comments onto the Google uh, document. Um, you can also just hop on the mic and start a conversation. That is also an option. Okay, I'm going to start with what what's already been entered. Um, so we have as someone whose bulk role is solidly in this group uh, in the access group. I'd like to know more about how the labs function in their day to day work roles. So is there anyone in the group who works in a lab who would like to talk a little bit about what your day to day looks like? This is your chance to brag about yourself and what you do all day. We may be a group of mostly library people um, that, I mean, just thinking. Based, <laughs> based on roles, but I, I mean, I work in a lab, um, but I think this is a really good um, point in terms of professional development. So one of the things that is crucial in the creation of a learning commons is that everybody who works in the learning commons knows what everybody else does, and that is um, absolutely critical for making appropriate referrals for sharing workloads. I mean, there's, you know, there's talk about who's going to sit at the concierge desk or stand in the concierge uh, area because it may not just be one location. It may be all over the place, especially if the learning commons is not co-located. So, you know, everybody's going to be able to, to share information with students. They may not be the person who actually does that job, but they can tell that student who does. And, and what they need to do to access it and when that workshop is and how they register and all that stuff. So I think that's a really good point um, that I know that the professional development team is working on and we're creating a list of training and, and more than training, but like understanding points, I guess, that everybody needs to have in order for this learning commons to actually work. All right, and I didn't see anything in learning support, which makes sense. I think a lot of us found ourselves in the support area, um, but this is a great question. I would like to understand how to create partnerships with campus faculty to foster active learning inside and outside the library. Um, and that that I think is a challenge that we've been facing not only in the library, but also in the labs. Um, for me personally, I find that um, partnering up with other areas. So for example, the Library at Northwest has partnered up with the Intercultural Office to invite faculty to come and speak about, um, uh, we had one that was on um, Mexican American Heritage uh, Pride Week. And um, so that was a nice way that we got not only another department involved, but they used their connections to reach out to faculty, uh, not only at at our campus, but also we pulled in a couple of faculty from South. Um, so that's one way to do it is, is to partner up. Um, but I think it, it can be that is that is absolutely a, a difficulty um, on our campus. The library is uh, all of student support um, has been disinvited sort of from our division meetings. And uh, so we don't have that direct contact um, at the start of every semester. 
uh, that we used to. So we're resorting a lot more to um, email and flyers and um, really trying to work with the connections of faculty who have come in to use the library and mentioning as they come in, oh, did you know about this service that we offer? Tell your friends, that kind of thing. Um, but does anybody else who, who works in a library area who has successfully partnered with campus faculty on a project, would you like to discuss how that went down, how, how that worked, whether it was successful or, or had some hiccups? One of the things that the Learning Commons um, has, there's a there's a work team that's surrounded, two work teams actually that are surrounding this. And one of the things that we've sort of tried to um, start framing up a little bit is how can we package services so that they're simple for faculty to just plug into their course? Um, and then, you know, as once they do it the first time, they'll realize the value and probably continue. So. That's one of the things that you may be thinking about. You know, you have a service that you really want to provide to faculty and partner with them on, but maybe you, nobody has really volunteered to partner or they're sort of skeptical. They don't really have time to build it into their course. Um, but, you know, is there a way that we could say, here's what we can do for you. These are the steps that need to happen. This is the timeline. And so it's a super easy kind of plug and play style um, to break that first uh, barrier and then you know once they've partnered at least once usually they're more uh, receptive because they realize the benefit and really it's not that labor intensive for them so if we can do most of it on our end you know they may be more likely Okay, and I see you typing, Stephanie, so I want to let you finish that. So how can we leverage our internal relationships at work to move some of our services online when our jobs are easily done in a face-to-face -face environment? Um, and that is, a, that is a big challenge that we're facing right now. Um, I think, at least for the library, um, making sure that faculty are aware of uh, reserve items that, that we've been able to purchase that are online or the ability to check out um, books still from the library, um, that kind of thing. It, but it's it really is coming down at the moment to communication. And we've had to start communicating with the people who we know are big library users, um, but also just reaching out to department chairs and admin assistants. The admin assistants tend to be uh, a little bit more helpful or a little bit more uh, connected, I think, um, to all of the faculty than the department chairs who just work within their department and not necessarily work closely with everyone in their division. And I'll let you finish typing in that uh, discovery and creativity area, but I wanted to get to this question here. I would like to know more about how IT managers will support staff who are supporting students. Um, and that's a great question um, because IT managers, we tend to think of as directly supporting uh, students or student access, um, but they are there to help uh, serve staff and, and to train staff as well. And so I think that's going to be part of that um, professional development um, that April was referencing earlier. Um, but it could also be a proactive effort on the part of the staff member. Uh, you could approach your supervisor, for example, and say there are a couple of us in the department who would like extra help learning how to use uh, this system or, or Google Docs. Would it be possible to partner with this IT manager to create a workshop so that the IT manager could train us on this particular uh, software or tool that we'd all like to use? Um, so sometimes uh, IT managers will be the ones who initiate that, but don't let um, don't let that be on them only. Feel free to, to approach them or, or try to coordinate or partner with them as well.
Oh, Ashley, I see that in the chat that you started an online book club and online gaming event at Northeast Library to stay connected with your patrons. And I think that's fantastic um, because, yeah, we we are spending a lot of time here talking about supporting faculty and staff, but it's important to stay connected to our students. A lot of them lost um, that physical support system of having a classroom with classmates and a faculty member that they could see and library staff that they could walk up to. And so having that online environment um, where they can still connect with the library in a fun way, uh, I think that's a fantastic idea. OK, IT has been viewed as back end help, and I think we need to bring them over to the light side. <laughs> I like that, Stephanie. <laughs> I hope you tell that to Brandon. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, um, at least on our campus, Brandon has been um, uh, really helpful in the forefront. But no, I agree. I think it would be helpful to bring um, IT out uh, among the other departments and to really integrate in because there may be technology uh, tools that we're not using or not using to our full capacity. Um, that would not only serve students, but would also help make staff and faculty jobs a lot easier. Okay, so I'm going to refer back to this question here. Can we start to think about partnering with CLCs and IT to put more learning tools in this type of space? Oh, into the into the online space. Um, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Um, were there any particular kind of tools that you were thinking about or um, any any particular like library services that you were thinking that we'd like to have an online presence for that we don't currently? You can put that in the document or the chat or you can hop on mic. Some of the software for ADA, absolutely. Um, and we've been we've been uh, coming up against that issue as well um, on Northwest campus. And I haven't heard anything uh, from district IT in terms of how to how to meet that need. Um, is anyone else in the meeting? Has anyone else heard anything about uh, um, bridging that ADA gap? through technology, whether through um, Blackboard or, or any other online environment? Yeah, I'm going to take that silence as a no. I, I agree, Stephanie. I think that is a gap. And um, it would be nice if we could uh, could bridge that gap. But yeah, I think that's a great way to, to bring in um, IT. Uh, to partnering within the learning common service model. Absolutely. So I think that um, excellent conversation, everyone. I think we need to head over to the general session. Um, doesn't it start at 12? Sorry, I muted my mic, but I was saying yes. <laughs> so I'm going to put the link to the general session in the chat so everybody can get back to it. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for contributing. This has been a super active group, uh, which is nice. And um, if you would head over to the same general session that we were at before, Terry just posted the link. And um, I mean, you will have access to the recording of this and also the Google Doc um, that'll be preserved as well. So thank you all. Um, and if you have any questions at all, feel free to, um, to reach out, message me on Teams or, or whatever it is.